Hey everybody, it's Regan with Oil With Me and that stands for Own Your Life With Me. And today I wanna to teach you how to ditch the default and own your life in the kitchen with some of my favorite eco-friendly sustainable kitchen hacks. Now think about the current state of affairs in the world. We have the climate crisis looming and then we have COVID-19. Between those two things, we're watching meat processing plants close on a daily basis, but we're seeing depressingly farmers having to throw away massive yields of perfectly good fresh fruits and vegetables due to procurement issues and supply chain issues so there's never been a more important time to start thinking about your individual choices start thinking about how you can get smart in the kitchen to keep your food fresh longer and minimize your personal food waste footprint we don't think about this a lot but food waste is a huge deal if food waste were a country it would be the third largest emitter of greenhouse gases after the u.s and china it's a really big deal. But the good news is a lot of that happens on the consumer side. So we can take little steps, uh, a little bit of uh, planning and a little bit of creativity to minimize our food waste. It's also May, which is National Salad Month. So this is a really cool opportunity to start to integrate more plant heavy recipes into your repertoire and starting to get creative with veggies in your kitchen. So without further ado, I'm gonna share some of the ways that I keep my food fresh longer and really lean into a sustainable kitchen. So first things first, shopping climate friendly. I, I always advocate for meal planning to avoid over shopping because if we just go into the grocery store without a plan, without a set list of meals that we're gonna make, a lot of time we don't have a real idea or a, <laughs> a use for that exciting new veggie that you picked up because you got excited and then it ends up rotting in the back of your fridge. So bookmark recipes, curate a specific grocery list and go to the grocery store with a mission in mind and try to stick as closely to that meal plan as you can. Cooking in bulk and storing things correctly is also a really good way to deal with this because sometimes you have to buy things in a larger quantity than you can consume. So cooking larger batches of food and then putting them in your freezer and saving them for later or leftovers, um, A, saves you a lot of time and B, can also save a lot of money and um, food waste. The other thing that I do when I'm shopping beyond having a plan when I go in is making sure that I come prepared with reusable grocery bags, reusable little pouches. If you're gonna go shop in the bulk section, you can use mason jars as well, um, just to try to minimize the interaction with single-use plastic at the grocery store because plastic bags are one of my biggest pet peeves. Usually the, the life cycle of a plastic bag, the amount of time consumers actually use a plastic bag is 11 minutes before it's thrown away, put in a landfill and never touched again. A lot of people aren't reusing them and they're not really, they don't lend towards reusable. They're very thin. They don't end up lasting that long compared to a nice canvas tote. So I always keep those in my car or um, right by the door. So I don't forget to walk out of the, don't forget them as I'm walking out of the house. Mesh bags are also really, really useful. They can be washed tons of times and they're great for storing produce. So when you're in the fruit section, instead of putting them in those plastic bags that they offer, you can just put them in your, the bag that you brought. Finally, always, always thinking about what and where you're buying focusing on plant-based foods, minimizing your animal product consumption is obviously gonna have a huge, huge impact on your overall climate footprint. Um, but then also thinking about supporting local farms, local business as much as you can. Not only is that gonna be more healthy, more likely to be organic and travel way less food miles to get to your plate, but you're gonna be supporting your local economy. I am a huge fan of CSAs, Community Supported Agriculture and Farmers Markets. So if that's available to you, that's a great option. I also love the company Imperfect Foods, which is combating food waste by doing food delivery boxes of ugly produce that people wouldn't buy at the grocery store but taste perfectly fine. Next step, lesson two, how to keep these things that you buy, these climate-friendly, climatarian foods that you buy at the grocery store or the farmer's market, how to keep these for fresher for longer in your home. So when purchasing greens, especially soft lettuce, you're gonna to wanna to store those in a container with a slightly wet reusable towel on the bottom and top to keep them moist but not soggy. If your container is creating that barrier between the greens and any excess water, they can safely last for weeks. There's something called green saver that you can look up and use. Store ingredients and cooked foods in clear containers in your fridge so that you can easily identify and quickly see what's inside. Ideally glass or BPA-free plastic, and just because it's BPA-free sadly does not mean that it's phthalate and toxic chemical free. So you wanna do your research on the plastics that you're using because BPA was banned, but then they replaced it with a very similar chemical structure that's just slightly different enough that it's not considered banned, but can be and is assumed to be just as dangerous as BPA. So just because the BPA free plastic isn't necessarily good, 
So um, glass if you can. And then what you're gonna wanna do is make sure you have either duct tape or a label maker and label those um, items with what's inside and the date that you put them in so that you're aware of how long they've been in your fridge. You don't have leftovers that you forgot about for two weeks and then by the time you get around to eating them, they're completely uh, spoiled. So being proactive and making sure you um, label everything in your fridge so you know what's going on in there. Uh, when you trim herbs like parsley or cilantro, actually store them in a glass jar with a little bit of water at the bottom and cover the leaves with a reusable bag. This is going to keep your herbs way fresher. I don't know about you, but I'm, I used to be queen of having herbs completely uh, rot in the back of my fridge after just a few days of having them. So this is a really great way to keep them fresh. Um, you can decant de your uh, dry goods like flour, beans, seeds, nuts in glass jars. I put all of my um, powders and seeds and nuts into uh, mason jars to create that airtight seal. This is going to A, save space, B, help you see what you have and the quantity that you have them instead of having little bags all over the place. Um, it's aesthetic. I really like the way it looks. And it's also going to... Um, keep your foods fresher for a little bit longer. Now, when I go back to the bulk store, I run out of walnuts. I can actually just bring my mason jar in and shop using my reusable mason jar instead of plastic, like I talked about at the beginning. Another way to keep your food fresh is use and utilize your fridge and freezer. Um, sometimes I keep my nuts in the fridge because it helps them stay fresh for longer. Um, that way I feel safe and confident buying things in bulk and knowing that they're not gonna go to waste before I get a chance to use them saving money, saving time, everything. Uh, the other thing that I do sometimes when herbs are about to go bad is I will actually fill ice cube trays with uh, chopped herbs and freeze them. It's a really cool way to make herbal iced tea. You can just put the herb cubes into your water, which is really fun and creative, but it also you can, can de-thaw them and use them in soups or salads or whatever you were going to use. Um, really, you can freeze pretty much anything. If it's frozen pop properly, it will stay fresh. So if you have veggies that you're not quite sure you're gonna use or you have an unexpected trip come up, instead of throwing out all of your food that's in your fridge, do what you can to try to freeze it so that you can reuse it later when you get home. Lesson three, getting creative about using all of your food scraps. Um, I am, a, as I said, I hate food waste, so I've gotten really creative about different ways that I can use my food scraps instead of throwing them away or composting them, which is a better alternative, obviously. For veggies that are about to go off, huge hack, you can make <laughs> salsa and sauces and hummus and pesto, um, really easy recipes online, and you can use kind of a little bit on the way of going bad herbs and, and vegetables, and they'll still taste great in your sauce when they're chopped up and diced. Um, even if it might not be something you want to eat on its own or in a salad. Um, you can make pesto, honestly, out of pretty much anything. And you can start to get really creative um, with your recipes and with your sauces and your salsas. I have a lot of friends that make homemade kimchi. I have a lot of friends that make homemade salsas. And I'm constantly pestering them to refill my jar because it's so fun and so good to make your own. And it's really empowering, too. I think I tend to enjoy food more when I've made it myself or made it with my friends and family. The other thing that's really, really easy veggie broth. When I'm cooking a big dinner party or I know I'm going to be doing a lot of meal prep, I will take a giant pan or a giant pot and I will put all my food scraps, like the tops of carrots or the top of a bell pepper, the seeds from the inside and carrot stems and celery leaves, and I'll put it all in that giant pan, giant pot. And I will just fill that up with water and boil it and then let it simmer for a while. That's veggie broth. I don't know if you guys have been just buying veggie broth from the grocery store whenever a recipe calls for it, but it's super easy to make your own. And it's a really easy way to make your food scraps useful. And it's awesome and delicious and can be used to stir fry, it can be used to make soup, all sorts of things. Another thing you can do with food scraps, leftover broccoli stalks or cauliflower stems, if you chop them into rounds, they can be a really great way to pretty seamlessly add fiber into your stir fry or smoothie. Um, you won't notice it, but it will add a really, really great source of healthy fiber into whatever it is you're making. You can use uh, little scraps and things as well to create pickles or to just toss them with um, salt and vinegar. And that can taste really good uh, as a garnish on a sandwich or in a rice bowl if you like fermented foods. It's also really gut friendly and gut happy food to have something fermented. The last thing about reusing everything is that did you know that a lot of veggies and herbs can regenerate? I've actually had a scallion growing in my fridge for months. So um, you can regenerate your most used veggies like romaine, lettuce, or spring onions by just soaking them in water 
or saving seeds from the squash or you know root bulbs from onions and you can regrow them by planting them in a small container and it happens really quickly and it's quite exciting it's like a little urban farm inside your home uh, and the last thing you can do is save citrus peels and submerge them in vinegar and you can make all-purpose cleaner with your essential oils as well so that's a really fun way to use uh, food scraps speaking of essential oils one of my biggest sustainable kitchen tips is using oils in recipes, using oils as an alternative to fresh herbs, especially if you are notorious for added, buying mint and then only using a few of the uh, mint sticks and then letting the rest rot. If that is you and you are not proactive about your fridge and things going bad, oils can be an incredibly empowering and sustainable alternative in recipes. Add some cinnamon essential oil to your oatmeal in the morning, add some a drop of cilantro essential oil to your homemade guac. I use the cumin essential oil in my hummus recipe. You can really get creative here. So if you want to learn more about that, you can check out my Instagram feed. I've got a lot of recipes that I share that I use essential oils in. My famous banana bread is so good. I swear it's because of the cardamom essential oil that I add. One little drop it goes a long way and it's a really sustainable uh, option for your kitchen. And finally, I just wanted to mention that it's really important in terms of sustainability, we talk a lot about closed loops and supply chains. And I think giving back is one of the most important ways to close that loop. So beyond just being proactive and sustainable and trying to avoid single use plastic and trying to avoid food waste, how can we give back from our kitchen? So one way to do that is to donate to food banks, especially if you have cans that you're not going to use or you um, over, over purchased because you went grocery shopping hungry. Um, Donating canned goods to a food bank is really, really amazing and important and really, really combats food security issues in this country and around the world. Another thing people don't think about is you can donate frozen foods to food banks as well, and that's really good for food safety. Um, they're going to be much more willing to take a donation that's frozen or canned rather than something fresh that might go off or might already be off. And the last thing you can do in terms of giving back is giving back to Mother Earth through composting. Composting might sound a little scary or it might sound a little gross when we're talking about dirt and probably bugs, but um, it's really easy to have a composting starter kit. Just keeping a bin uh, under your sink or by your trash can and make sure it's sealed, obviously, to contain the smell. Um, you can store compost bags of food in the freezer. And then what I would do in New York is I would just go to my local, um, the Union Square Farmers Market, and they had compost drop-off spots. Um, Grow NYC had little boxes where you could drop off some of your compost uh, and they would take care of it for you. And then in Boston, they actually have compost sort of services where they come and pick up your bin. They give you a bin and you fill it and they come pick it up. The one that I use is called Bootstrap Compost. So hopefully this video was helpful. I know it was a little long. There's a lot you can do, small steps, nothing complicated, nothing that's going to take too much time. And it's all basically free. And in fact, it, a lot of it saves you money. So if you're looking for ways to be a little more sustainable in the kitchen, to minimize your food waste, and to make sure that you're make, taking the maximum advantage of all the fresh food you buy as you're experimenting with new recipes and going vegan, um, hopefully these tips help. They've really changed the game for me. And it's really fun to adventure and explore and think of cooking less as a chore and more of an adventure that you can constantly be iterating, constantly ideating, creating new recipes and um, being friendly and um, eco-happy in everything you do. So I'm Regan with Oil With Me. I hope you own your life with me. I hope you ditch the default and get a little more sustainable in your kitchen.